Poor Dove. All right, so give us your game. So, so first and foremost, let me go through the procedure. So, oh, oh, can somebody else go since so I can see how it goes? Or... No, 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 no. So I'll I'll give you some uh, the the basic overview. So the way wise crowd wise crowds works is you'll take about three minutes to just briefly explain your case, your situation that you find yourself in, and then we'll take uh, about two minutes to ask any clarifying questions that come up for us that we'd like to to get additional information from you on. Um, after that's done, um, you'll mute yourself and turn off your webcam. And then the rest of us in the group will have a conversation about your, your case. And we'll take about eight minutes to generate some advice. And then we'll invite you at the end of that eight minutes to come back and tell us what you thought of our consultation. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and this yeah. this is this uh, this th this tool that we're using is one of the liberating structures. It's called Wise Crowds. So, oh um, yeah, I've used that before. Okay, I, I, in this context, so beautiful. So, should I start? Yeah, go for it. Let her rip. Okay. So, um, for ten years, I run the School of Wellness, and I do keynotes, workshops, retreats all over the country, mostly for healthcare, but for lots of people. And I'm getting invited more and more into pretty senior level um, health systems like vice presidents of huge systems. And I have sort of my, my script about dealing with difficult others. And I, it's a triage system I created mostly from members of my family about <laughs> kind of how to not get so disrupted by difficult people. And then, you know, we do small group work. Well, so I'm out um, dealing with this group of vice presidents with a partner and, um, you know, did, did my, we had the whole day <laughs> And we did the difficult triage system, like how to identify and name accurately the difficult person. And then um, they hadn't been together in three years and there was a new CEO and they were feeling really threatened about their jobs. It sort of came out um, that they were all afraid they're gonna get fired, that the new, new sheriff in town had all these different demands and there was a lot of fear in the room and uncertainty. And so um, luckily I was with my partner and we just tossed the script. We just threw it away and asked them what they wanted and they wanted to build solidarity and, and be more of a vice president group going to the CEO as a collaborative thing because they're dealing with so much complexity. They, they were all in these silos and not talking to each other. Mm -hmm. So basically uh, it was super uncomfortable for me because I'm like the content person and I know this is not what you do. And I just recognize I have to get better at reading the crowd and being more nimble um, and, and flexing and asking the group like that. It was very mushy. It was like, like Brene Brown describes the rumble. It went on for like a couple of hours, just not sure. And I was really uncomfortable. And, you know, we just asked a few innocent questions, but really didn't do anything. And then, um, and then I, I guess I just felt like that was weird. Uh, we really didn't do anything. Um, you know, they could have created this space without us for sure, you know? Um, that maybe they didn't know that. So I guess I'm wondering how do I skill up and do this more because people really, really want to talk to each other and not be a content expert. That's what's really obvious to me. Mm. And I'm the content expert. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, thanks. Then we will roll over this minute into clarifying questions. Okay. So one thing I don't understand, you managed, even though you're, you're totally not an expert at this, to create a space or to help them create a space where they achieved what they wanted to achieve. They didn't know they wanted that. Um, yeah, I think so. They were really pleased with the outcome, for sure. Okay, so it, if that's the case, then why not trust that if you did it unintentionally, you can do this unintentionally again, just by forgetting that you want to be intentional. Like, wh why are you afraid? Mm -hmm. what, what do you need? You're the expert of it. You managed to do it even without trying. So wh wh what is the problem? Um, interesting question, love the question. Um, well, I was, I was hired to do a job, to do a thing. Um, to help them give, as actually to give feedback to their reports, they were having trouble. That was what the, their boss told us they wanted, and and so that we didn't deliver that really. Um, and it was just a very different agenda. And um, 
yeah, I that's a that's a really good question that I'm not trusting the group. Um, and maybe I'm afraid of like um, a toxic person or a toxic situation where somebody comes in and hijacks and takes the agenda, you know. Um, I mean, everybody in that situation had to be well intentioned and they were, but that's not my experience. Um, so why, yeah, intention. So I consider wellness to be this very broad thing and wellness is feeling safe at work, getting your needs met, being recognized. So, um, you know, I think um, that's the intention is that um, it's safe. And I guess I'm afraid that it could get unsafe if somebody came in and I don't know if I would know how to handle them, even though I'm the expert on dealing with difficult others. <laughs> <laughs> right, I know, right? Totally. Full of, uh, full of contradictions. I'm sorry, but th but th I'm not going to apologize. So um, I I love the question though about the intention and not just allowing um, allowing stuff to happen. Whatever's going to happen, happen and being okay with that. All right. Let me just make sure go through the what I get gather from the design brief. See if there's any stuff that seems to be missing. So the place or the context that this is happening in is in these professional engagements for you where you're being hired to come in and usually do some deliver some form of content mm -hmm. uh, and what you're noticing is that there seems to be a change in the environment and yeah. that uh, rather than receiving content people want to be in interaction with each other um, yeah. and it sounds like somewhat in relation to content but not per not necessarily the same right um, and in terms of like the, the purpose um, or the intended outcome, I guess the, um, that is still a little squishy for me, right? So what is it that you would like to have happen in, the, in these contexts? Well, we, we went in there to kind of teach them how to create more of a coaching culture and how to give feedback in a more coachy way um, that was more developmental and mm -hmm. less punitive, like, to, to try to create that psychological safety because they're kind of at the top and they have a lot of people reporting to them. And that just got completely, uh, we, we dumped the script on, on all of that, like content teaching and MOing and role playing and all the things we were gonna do. So that, that didn't happen. So maybe I'm uncomfortable with what we were hired to do and then what happened. But we're very different. They were not aligned really. Hmm. So, so, so they wanted to talk to each other and, and build solidarity. And we were working on the, the outward relationships. That's what we were, thought we were hired to do. Okay. So, so I guess I don't know going forward when I walk into a room like that, like how do I read it? Like I've, I've got a script, I've got a plan, all of the things. And then I walk in and the agenda is very different. And that, that I can feel some fear coming up when I talk about, when I think of that. Hmm. Any other clarifying question? Nope. Yeah. Um, so looking back on this experience and then mapping some of those things out to previous experiences, do you think that um, this was something that uh, like that could have happened in other um, other gigs that you've done or and that like you you didn't allow it to happen or something or is is this a, a one-off thing that was just completely random and that you just you're just really surprised by yeah no i think when i look back i think there's this craving i've noticed post covid mm -hmm. this craving for connection mm -hmm. and i come in as the outside person and what they really don't need me like that's what i'm i guess <laughs> they don't need me so i think it has happened before for sure yes where I'm kind of hired to do a program and I do the program and then I can see that they just want to talk. Okay. Um, well, that'll be our time on clarifying yeah. questions. We'll have to say that's good enough for now, safe enough to get started. Um, okay. So uh, Eileen, if you can go ahead and mute yourself and turn off your webcam, we will go ahead and get started with the consultation. The important part is to listen though, right? <laughs> I always forget to say that. Right? <laughs> just yeah, walk away. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. Not not go to the go get a cup of tea and tell us what you thought. Important for whom? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. Precisely. Um. So, um, consultants. What do what do we think? 
So, like for me, there's one one question that uh, that that I think is interesting is uh, who are you serving? Like you you were hired to do A, you feel that the team wants to do B. What is your risk in doing A, and what is your risk in doing B? Mm. About intentionality and. And a layer on top of this is, can you do B while doing A? Yeah, there was something very interesting that also came up. Uh, like she, she made mention that she was there to talk and teach about psychological safety. And instead of doing a lesson about psychological safety, she actually did the thing, right? She actually built real psychological safety. So from, from like, like um, you know, a contracting or... It maybe didn't come in the, the 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 structured organized lesson plan, but there's also an embodied experience there that you know, seems valuable. And this is beautiful because, in fact, you can use this as as a workshop to understand psychological safety, like, mm -hmm. right? You build it, and the, in the last ten minutes, you sum up what what have we learned in the show tonight. <laughs> yeah, I think there's something really. Um true about what you were saying about the need for relational um, post COVID like relational uh, mending or um, being heard, seen, felt, um, and not being talked at, but being interacted with or facilitated with. And even though it may seem as if you weren't necessary there, I think that that also shows how um, necessary you were in that like you were able to just by you being there and your presence allowed for them the natural wisdom to kind of emerge there so um, I, I definitely think um, a don't sell yourself self short on that but also be like there's there's something that's really interesting about this you have something you're really good at and something that is brand new that is just like emerging that you're like whoa this is an opportunity so maybe having pairing both of those things in your practice of like, yes, you have you go in with an agenda and you have something, but you also have tools to adapt when things go a little bit differently. Um, maybe it's asking more questions. Maybe it's asking the right questions. Maybe it's um, I know like authentic relating is a big thing that is like really helps the relational stuff. And it's a technique. Um, maybe there's more kind of training that could be done there and I, I don't know um yeah so dev yeah so th there was another sentence that she said that i i wrote down that they don't really need me mm. and, and and it's interesting because i it you know the comment that i give to anyone including my kids and my ex-partner is that we don't need really need anything <laughs> Like the, we need something in order to something else, perhaps. Like we need air in order to live. But who said we need to live, right? So when you say they don't really need me, like I, I sense it, something like self-diminishing. Mm. So like in in the whole in, in the whole presentation of of, of the of the case let's call it there's something of you know I'm, I'm not worthy of this i don't know how to do this they don't really need what i'm doing and and my fear is that when you get in a space with this vibration it's contagious hmm. It's, I, don't, I don't remember who, who said, if you think that you can, and if you think that you can't, you're right. Lord. So in this sense, I, I, I would invite you, her, I don't know, they, yeah, I hope you're, you're listening, um, to remember that, to remember that the, um, there's another saying that I love, don't believe everything you think. <laughs> no. There's a, I, I, I also took note of that pattern, right? And I think, I don't know, I, I keep coming back to the thing of like, but you're doing the thing that you're, that instead of 
like teaching about it, you're modeling it. Yeah. You're here to talk about uh, coaching and you let an inquiry, like what, what could be more coachy than asking a bunch of questions? Like that's the job, right? To guide the inquiry. Um, I can, I can get behind the vibe that like being much more familiar with the content that this is a new sort of skill set and wanting to have sort of ways to organize people's attention in order for that inquiry to happen at scale well, because uh, this concern that she has, I think is well founded that like, if there is somebody who, you know, if there is a hyper extrovert in the room, then this leading this very, this sort of inquiry in such a way may learn, may just end up with one person sort of dominating all of the thought space for the whole group. And so there's a number of different patterns, though, that's already present in this conversation that are that are, uh, I think, um, well recognized um, that can to to sort of be used. Right. So with this idea around, you know, if you want to build psychological safety, this thing, this this pattern around heard, seen and respected would be a, a particular structure that I would definitely recommend to use. Um, so. Um, exactly, Sherry. They are liberating structures are there to help us overcome, you know, one person dominating the room. So heard, seen, respected is really straightforward. Split people into pairs and invite them to tell a story, um, usually about five to seven minutes in length, about a time when they did not feel heard, seen, or respected. And, you know, invite the counterpart listening in the story to just be fully present and to, to just listen to the story, to not interrupt, but to only invite, to only ask questions, then invite more information. And what happened then? And what happened there? And how was, how was that for you? And tell me more. Um, uh, so that's one particular pattern that might help you out in this instance. Um, the, there's also this, this, in our conversation, there was also elements of this uh, this pattern of tris, right? You know, brain actively brainstorm the worst possible the actions that would create the worst possible outcomes imaginable, um, just to you know sort of make friends with the worst case scenario, and then to figure out how our behaviors may be may relate to those things that we recognize are not particularly helpful. Um, Dove also brought in this idea of wicked questions, right? How is it that you can A, that you can A, deliver the content and Z, um, create the space for human connection and interaction at the same time? Um, that's more of an integrated autonomy move, but figuring out what those polarities that we're sort of trying to navigate uh, between. Um, and then the idea of the debrief, right, to embody the experience, to build the thing together, and then to reflect on it is very typical for the pattern that is what, so what, now what? You know, what were the, uh, the factual observations? What were the inferences, the meaning, the impact of those observations? And now what do we want to do with this information as we go back into our day-to-day -day lives? And I would also add this pat pattern, Troika or, Wic or Wise Crowds, as, a, as another um, very powerful structure that can help sort of um, uh, reinforce and provide a, uh, a frame for how to do this sort of coachy, consultation-y, different-y type of work. Um, so those are some particular patterns that jump out that might be useful for, for the, the case of Eileen. What's up, Dov? Just, uh, I, the, I want to, just to reiterate what you said and Sherry said um, by zooming out. I think if the problem is how to deal with toxicity, liberating structures are a great, great way not to let one person dominate the whole discussion. So one person can dominate three people if you use Toika or, you know, or a pair if you use impromptu net networking, but for sure they can't have a voice that dominates everyone. So what, never mind the details, or perhaps it's, the details are important, but the big picture is that as, when you break the pattern of everyone in one big group and there's and the pattern is that one person is speaking, the rest have no choice but to listen, then you remove the you know the the, the chance of contamination. 
Exactly. You're able to sort of, you know, speaking of the word triage, you're able to separate the good, uh, the most pro-social conversations from the most anti-social conversations. And that at least gives space for the more pro-social conversations to really flourish and limits the impact of the more anti-social interactions. So we are across our time boundary. So I'll invite uh, Eileen to come back and tell us what she thought of our consultation. And, wow. Uh, wow, yeah. it was remarkable. Yeah, it was just remarkable. I've been on the little periphery of liberating structures, and I think I need to insert myself more forcefully in. Uh, I, I really um, got a lot out of what you said. I don't really know what Troika is, but I'm going to find out. Um, and I This I is Troika. What we're doing now is Troika. Oh, so you know oh, what Troika is. OK. Um, no, I, I think what I didn't mention was that um, I'm used to working with physicians and nurses in like the clinical realm. And this was like a, um, a brave step for me to talk to vice presidents because I'm just not in their world. And, and I, 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 maybe I underestimated that feeling of worthiness. Like, this is like, how did I, how did I get in this room? You know, <laughs> like um, I'm a well, you know, I'm a wellness person. I'm a nurse practitioner, I'm a clinician and here I am. And, um, and so that that I, I think I underestimated, and I've got to really embody and and really work on this kind of grounded confidence that if anyone is sort of having um, a, a problem, I have the skills to go deeper and and to really know that and own that and wear it. Um, that's what I do, all in the name of wellness. I love the question about who am I serving, and I think you know getting quiet before any kind of public appearance is, you know, who am I here to serve and be just more agile. Um, so I'm, I'm delighted with this uh, with questions all the way. I mean, I took three pages of notes. And so this was so helpful to me. And that intentionality uh, question um, and, and worthiness, I think is very real. Um, and, I, and I want to do more of this. And, and one of the reasons might selfishly be is that I had the you know, four hours of listening to this incredible conversation about their world. Like, it was just astonishing. It was like a voyeuristic thing that I, you know, I got to hear what their struggles were and they were huge and complex and hard. Um, so, so, and I think the other thing that happened in my situation was I did the braving exercise. So when you were talking about, you know, the, a time you were disrespected, I had them break out into um, a time you were brave. And, um, and then they, they, I think that really loosened them up a lot. I think that's what kind of led to this actually when I think about it. So yes, <laughs> that, and I'm curious about this nobody's needed thing, like air isn't really needed because we don't really need to live. I'm gonna sit with that for a while. Um, but now that I really pieced this together more that I, I went in without granted confidence, um, the grading exercise you know, was my thing. I pushed, my partner didn't wanna do it and I pushed and pushed. And I think that's what really set this thing in motion. Hmm. So um, yes, I have a lot, a lot of things to think about here and it's really valuable and deep and beautiful and perfect. I, I thought there'd be 400 people on this call and I was just going to anonymously listen. So thank you. <laughs> No, no, I, I don't do anonymously listening calls. That's that's not my vibe, but um, for sure. Also, this this braving exercise that you sort of described is also lines up with the 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 appreciative interviews or appreciative inquiry, right? Which is another actually has a similar a similar lineage with from liberating structures, right? So mm -hmm. tell a story about um, alternatively about a time that went similar to how you want this space to go in order to find the and extract the the overlapping bits of um, coherence between your story and my story that might give us some indicator of positive principles that we can lean into also super killer pattern so i don't know man i get if i'm if i if i'm on it's yeah, <laughs> human i don't know human it sounds like you crushed it so you know, more power to you Thank you. This is incredibly valuable, all of you. I don't know what Sherry's role is, but Jared and, and Doug and Jeremy really mm. deep crack. Sherry's the sniper. She's sitting there like with deep insight, you know, listening on top of the grassy knoll. Right? <laughs> And just one personal thing, I invite you to connect to me on LinkedIn because I would love to talk to you more about this.
Okay. I mean, I didn't know if I needed a, a, a you know, to, to really skill up on facilitation skills. That's just not anything I've ever really done. Because mm -hmm. I, you know, I've been trying to unlearn expert for decades as a, as a clinician, you know, having all the answers. Um, and it's just, you know, I feel like there's maybe some skills I need. No worries. That's why it's an invite. You don't have to use it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't know, though, that I, I would say that while there are distinct things like any any coaching and facilitation, they do have a common core, which is, you know, we we're both sort of guiding an inquiry and other people are really fill, filling in the information. The difference is that like with with facilitation, it adds this uh, an additional layer, which is we have to or we have to arrange the attention and space and the the interactions of of other people in order to give us um, to give us in like a positive outcome of that inquiry because it's that that won't happen necessarily by itself um, in every setting. Um, but I like uh, that the idea is that there has to be that tension. Really, I mean, I guess one of the questions I think in healthcare that needs to be asked, or maybe any workplace, is what's the conversation we need to be having that we're not having? You know, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of it. Everyone wants to kind of dance around the periphery. Mm -hmm. No, most definitely. So, like, there's a lot of great patterns that can help reveal that information. Riz is one, eco cycles one. There's there's good stuff. So if you're if you're looking to skill up, I would I think you're. It seems like you're in the right place. Liberating structures is basically the vehicle through which I I learned everything about facilitation, um, and that what what I find particularly can, nice about them is that by learning this sort of limited design pat set of design patterns, it sort of gives it, it's like le learning your scales for a musical instrument is that once you, once you understand the concept of scales, it's like, Oh, well, may I don't know all of these other scales, but I know how to learn scales and then use them. So like, mm -hmm. then you can learn all types of other sort of distinct patterns uh, relative with relative ease because these are well organized, but um Cool. Well, that's the game. Beautiful. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm wondering if there, um, if there is any uh, liberating structures certification plans for the future. Um, so whether that be you lead a way to like give a course or a certificate or anything like that. Uh, to prove web three or to prove um you know sure liberating structure fluency to proficiency i proficiency. there's around this question i have thought an enormous amount and the answer to that is is uh, no um but i do have a concept design on how to document the learning journey so mm -hmm. You know, liberating structures first and foremost are open source, Creative Commons. Like they are, they are just out there and available. They are non-commercial, so anybody can grab them and use them. And for me, as a as a person learning, that was really really important. Like I'm, I just have authority issues, and anybody telling me like I have to be, I have to do W X Y Z before I'm good enough is like, nah. Well, let me hold on. Let me show you. Um, <laughs> So, so, so that uh, aspect is, is really important. One of the things that I did that helped me learn is I was also very organized in, in the, the structures that I had seen that I had, was learning and had knew how to use. And I also kept track of the structures that I had never seen before. I didn't know anything about. And that, that basically enabled me to go through the list and go, well, this is what I know. This is what I still have left to know. And then to like continuously look at those things I have left to know and to go, oh, when might I find an opportunity to use this? And so to move that into the other category. And that for that, that's pretty easy to do. I mean, I just did it in a notebook, but if you wanted to create some form of like token or some badge that um, like I would be, there's two ways to do it. One is with some form of token that I would basically say, hey, you know, Eileen 
I know for sure that we have told you about uh, wicked questions. We've talked to you about those. You now know that those are exists. You now know that Triz exists. You now know that uh, Heard, Seen, Respected exists. You now know that uh, Troika exists. So all of these things sort of move into a into a different action potential because you now know that they exist. Um, and so I could for sure send some form of message or create some form of protocol that says, hey, you know, I vouch for the fact that you you know about these things. I can also also be happily um, vouch for the fact that you know about appreciative interviews based on you know what you described that 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 pack tracks for me. And in the same way that you know participating in this space, um, speaking of which, um, if you want a token for participation in this space, I keep forgetting to mention this, um, leave your e send your email address to me in the chat and I will send you a participation token. And that participation token, it's a proof of uh, attendance protocol. Um, that acts as one of those ways that I'm just trying to like, help create breadcrumbs of you know, like of our learning journey here together that we can then use to go, oh, well, you know, you, you've learned something. We've learned something here together with each other. And, um, and then on top of that, this layer around attestation. So to create a sort of peer to peer layer where, <laughs> um, a peer-to-peer -peer layer where we can sort of point at each other and you know you guys can now for sure all certify that I kind of know how to you how to run wise crowds or troika consulting like that we have created a an artifact of that experience um, so yeah for sure there is a way to document the learning journey but I think that's a different thing than like certification um, in, in an important ways got it makes sense very inspirational. Okay. I know Yoga Napelo at, at, at some point had the, had the journey like this, like a mind settlers was was his project. Mm -hmm. So like you, you would uh, every week you would get some uh, new assignments, like uh, articles that you can read, things that you can try, podcasts that you can listen to, uh, things that you can sum up, and each item had points on it. And or like you had a meetup, and if you would you, you go to the meetup, you would get some points. And then when you got enough points, you would move to the next level. So, and, and like he kept score of how, how many points you have. I, I don't know if this already exists or not, but this little thing that we just did would be an incredible podcast. I mean, it does. We just recorded it and I'll upload it to YouTube um uh when when we're done basically but i mean production values are crap because i'm i'm lazy but sure i mean go for it make it make it happen and if, if you think it, if you think people will love it go for it do it uh, it is it is of value to folks i i i, I have noticed <laughs> but also jeremy like if we if we're already on the meta level I noticed that uh, it, as time goes by, this group becomes smaller and smaller. And it, that doesn't matter to me as much as by the size of the group, we're limited to using only Troika. Mm -hmm. we, we have no, no other, we, we didn't practice anything else for a while now. Sure, sure. That, I, that's a little bit by design in this particular context. Next week will be a different thing because we'll do the dojo. Um, our theme will be self-reflection over or before uh, criticism. Let me think about this because before I tell you what. Uh, what... <laughs> no, well, mm. but yeah, I mean, if we do have a larger group as well, there's uh, there's a lot of different there's additional variation right that we can put on this theme that is why wise crowds there's um there's a pattern called wise fish that basically turns this interaction into a fishbowl so imagine if there was 30 other people on this call we went through the same thing um but then after our consultation we would invite those those additional people to split into groups of three four five and then to offer a critique 
or a build on our advice and to take some specific element of what was in our consultation and to sort of zoom into it in additional detail while we then continue to work as a group on the initial question. And so that's a lot of fun. That would be and cool. In, and about this, I have another thing to say now, but now you know where I'm coming from. Um, I would love to examine with this group the use of Willow plugin for Zoom. So we can have a separate uh, call to see if Willow can integrate well with Zoom and your intentions. Hmm. No, that could be cool. It might make it easy. So imagine like you have a, a room with the, you know, with the fishbowl mm -hmm. and you have then just on the side of it, a few small rooms for the people that they can go there. And, and all of this is done over Zoom. But let's talk this week. Yeah, for sure. We'll check it out. I like it. Well, we've got ourselves about 10 minutes and then I got to go scoop up the kids. I would say, given the fact that that's not quite enough time to do, deal with another consultation, we call it a wrap for today. Um, so next week will be the uh, Think Slow Dojo. So that is a space inspired by the manifesto for slow thinking. Um, I would very much encourage you guys to go to the Liberating Structures uh, website and join the Slack channel if you're if you're not a part of that there. Um, there's uh, about there was literally there was exactly nine thousand when I looked at it the other day. Uh, different Liberating Structures users all over the planet that are happy to ask an, answer questions at a moment's notice. Um, <clears throat> so. Instead of putting the link here, can you put it in the invite? Of the meetup. Slack. Um, I'm on the Liberating Sessions website. Yep. I'm trying to find I think this is fine. <laughs> the user fast. groups. I think the fastest way might be for me to grab the go to the Slack channel and see if I can create a fresh link. Let's give that a go. And while this is happening, I'll thank everybody on the internet for their time, attention, and energy, and see you next time.